For ages, Pluto felt like the end of the map, a tiny cold dot at the edge of sunlight. Beyond it, we pictured empty, dark, and slowly drifting ice. But signs now point to something else. For many of Pluto's hidden features, such as the discovery of a lake that once flowed with a mysterious liquid. The outer rim of our solar system may be wild, busy, and unstable. Odd motions, warped paths, and gravity tricks keep showing up. The border of our neighborhood may not be calm. It may tug at the balance closer in. Pluto was found in 1930 and was crowned as the ninth planet. For decades, school charts showed it as the last stop. In 2006, it became a dwarf planet, yet it retained its role as a marker. Pluto still feels like a threshold. Past it lies the Kuiper Belt, a ring of icy bodies and other dwarf planets. Farther still is the Oort Cloud, a giant shell of frozen debris so far out that sunlight is a faint memory. This is where the sun's pull fades and interstellar space begins. For a long time, many thought this frontier was quiet. You could imagine it like a museum vault, storing old parts from the solar system's birth. Stable, predictable, leftover fossils. But that simple picture has started to crack. Objects out there do not drift in neat ellipses. Some swing oddly, some clumps, some ignore our rules. Some reports and talks attributed to US space policy forums have discussed unexplained anomalies. The talk is blunt. Weird things are happening beyond Pluto, and they might not be good. We are not just finding icy rocks. We see behavior we did not expect. Odd orbits, motion anomalies, gravity hints at hidden mass. As one researcher, Dr. Eleanor Voss, put it, it looks calm from far away, but it hides complexity we're only starting to grasp. Whether you accept every claim or not, the pattern is hard to ignore. Something at the edge seems to be stirring. This challenges decades of assumptions. The far frontier does not look like a passive backwater. It looks like an active zone that can influence the whole system. What once felt like a strong outer wall now seems like a shifting, leaky border. And oddly, the path to this idea did not start there. It began much closer to home, with the moon. For centuries, we thought of the moon as quiet and dead, a lamp in the dark. Then NASA flew the Grail mission in 2011. Two craft, Ebb and Flo, traced the moon's gravity in fine detail. They flew about 55 kilometers. They measured tiny changes in their distance. The gravity map was the sharpest ever made. What did it show? The moon bends. It flexes under Earth's pull. Picture a stress ball squeezed each orbit. The shock was that the two lunar faces do not flex the same. The near side responds more. The far side is stiffer. That hints at a lopsided interior. The near side likely holds more heat, rich in uranium, thorium, and potassium. Their slow decay makes warmth that keeps parts of the moon pliable even now. For decades, we called the moon geologically dead. Grail said, not quite. The moon breathes just a little. The surface shifts. The inside is not uniform or fully cold. If our nearest neighbor can hide this for so long, what else lies hidden on worlds much farther away? The moon was not the only surprise. We have seen tides flexing across the system. Look at Io, the moon of Jupiter. In 1979, Voyager saw it spewing lava sky high. Io is the most volcanically active world we know. Why? Tidal heating. Jupiter's gravity fights the pulls of other moons. Io gets stretched and squeezed. All that flexing turns into heat. Europa tells another version of the same story. Its surface is cracked ice. Beneath it sits a deep ocean, maybe twice the volume of Earth's combined oceans. Again, tides supply the heat to keep water liquid. Saturn's moon, Enceladus, does this too, venting plumes that hint at a warm ocean under ice. Lesson learned, tidal forces are engines. They stir interiors. They drive volcanoes and oceans. Worlds we expected to be frozen and simple turn out to be active and complex. Big idea. The solar system is not a quiet clock. It is restless. It hides heat and motion in places we call dead. Even the small stuff went rogue. We long assumed big asteroids were sorted by weight, with heavy metal cores and lighter crusts. NASA's Dawn mission saw Vesta as more uniform than expected, not neatly layered. That implies a messy past. Collisions, breakups, reassembly. 
a cosmic junkyard rebuilt over and over. Planet building is not a clean build, it is a battlefield. If a big asteroid can defy the rulebook, what might giant, far colder bodies be doing where sunlight barely reaches? When the familiar turns strange, the moon's two faces make this clear. The near side has dark maria and looks younger. The far side is rough, cratered and ancient. Why the split? The near side seems rich in heat-making elements. Radioactive decay kept parts warm longer. Activity lasted. The far side cooled fast and stayed cold. This contrast forced scientists to rethink how our satellite formed and evolved. If the closest world can hide such drama, we should expect more surprises in the cold, dim outer dark. Jump to the deep beyond. Objects like Sedna and 2012 VP113 have extreme, long-period orbits, an object playing by different rules. At its farthest, it drifts about 1,600 times farther from the Sun than Earth does. One loop takes around 25,000 years. Its path is stretched like taffy. It skims the faint limits of the Sun's grip. One oddball does not prove a trend. But it raises a question. How many more hide there? Each new discovery changes the picture. Pluto no longer looks like the end. Sounds like the start of a giant frontier. A place full of icy wanderers with old scars. A place shaped by impacts and chaos from the solar system's earliest days. Then came 2023. Some newly reported candidates, if confirmed, could complicate Planet Nine clustering arguments. It belongs to a rare group called Sednoids. These objects live far past Neptune in the deep cold. Each one matters. For years, some distant objects looked oddly aligned. This led to the Planet Nine idea, a huge unseen planet herding bodies with gravity. But Ammonite pushed back. Its orbit does not fit the crowd. It angles almost the other way. That is a problem for Planet Nine, as a single, simple fix. Either the theory is incomplete, or more forces are at work. Maybe more big bodies. Maybe a complex dance we have yet to map. The first image was a faint blur. Still, it hit a nerve. Our model is not finished. The outer system is stranger than we thought. All this fed into a larger review. Some analysts argue that the outer region could host many large bodies, but this remains under study. Beyond Pluto, the region is not empty. It may be crowded with many large icy worlds. Dozens, maybe hundreds. Their orbits are not tidy circles. They are long, slanted, and eccentric. These bodies pull on each other. Their tugs ripple into the Kuiper belt. Over long spans, those ripples could creep inward. The tone was urgent. If the edge is unstable, our long-term maps of the solar system are shaky. We like to predict planet motion millions of years out, but those forecasts assume a calm background. If the background is moving, the forecast changes. A closest composite image showed a cluster of faint points, each a real-world object. Tiny on our screens, yet massive enough to matter. The message landed hard for many people. We were taught that the solar system is a steady machine. Now, it looks more like a living system. Balanced, yes, but not fixed. Sensitive to hidden weights moving in the shadows. This is no longer just a hunt for one phantom planet. We may be looking at many movers. Together, they can shift the outer balance. Think of it like a crowded rink in low light. Even if you cannot see every skater, you feel the bumps and drifts they cause. Could this affect us? Not soon. But over millions of years, small nudges add up. That matters for comet paths, impact risk, and even where we search for life in cold, tidal heated oceans. Let's be clear, some claims here are still debated. Labels like Ammonite and 2017 of 201 come from reports and talks, not glossy press releases. The data are thin, the objects are dim, the orbits take ages to trace. But the broader story holds, the more we look, the less quiet the outer system appears. We keep finding motion, heat, and complexity in places once written off as dead. You might ask, so what if a few icy worlds wobble? Here's why it matters. First, it rewrites formation theory. If the outer belt is crowded and active, our models of how planets formed need an overhaul. Second, it guides missions. Where should we send the next probe after New Horizons? Which objects are worth a flyby or an orbiter? 
Third, it shapes risk. Large bodies steer comet traffic over geologic time, and it adjusts how we search for life. In a way, this loops back to the moon. We thought we knew it. Then, gravity mapping uncovered a lopsided interior. Uneven heat drove long-lasting change. That discovery taught us humility. If the nearest world keeps secrets, the farthest ones will too. So we should expect the edge to surprise us. Not once, many times. Pluto is not the end. It is the door. Beyond it lies a busy borderland of ice, rock, and slow power. Tides can warm frozen hearts. Impacts can rebuild worlds. Hidden giants can bend smaller paths. The system is not broken, but it is not a perfect clock. It's alive. It shifts. Every new measurement updates the map. What do you think is shaping the outer dark? One hidden planet, many medium ones, or something else? Could tides and clustered masses explain the odd orbits without a single Planet 9? Tell us your theory below. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the strange frontier past Pluto, like the video, subscribe, and share it with a fellow space fan. Thanks for watching, and see you next video.